Welcome back to Primetime News. And a special welcome to our viewers at OneSpotMedia.com. Up first this evening, with the government still forging ahead with development plans for the Vermont Field Aerodrome in Clarendon, details of massive losses at at least two other facilities have been unearthed. Information obtained by TVJ News through an access to information request shows that the Ken Jones and Negril Aerodromes are stained with red ink. This is in addition to the loss making Ian Fleming International Airport, previously known as the Boscobel Aerodrome. There are currently three airdromes in Jamaica. These small airports, the Tinson Penn Airdrome in Kingston, the Negril Airdrome in Westmoreland, and the Ken Jones Airdrome in Port Antonio, Portland, are part of the nation's civil aviation system, facilitating tourists, flight training, and medical emergencies, among others. However, there is again concern about the viability, let alone commissioning, of fourth. Through an access to information request, it was revealed that two have been racking up millions in losses each year. The figures received show that the Ken Jones Airdrome in Portland has averaged about $10 million in losses each year from 2011 to 2018. In 2018, operational expenses were over $15.7 million with a mere $97,000 income for the year. As at the end of 2018, the accumulated loss from 2011 stood at $83 million. Not surprising, as the report shows that aircraft movement has dwindled to a little over 300 each year. This is down from over 2,000 a decade earlier. At the Negril Airdrome, losses for the past eight years totaled $216 million. Income for 2018 was $2.2 million, but expenses were $26.5 million, a loss of over $24 million for that year alone. The two facilities have cost taxpayers just under $300 million for the period. Details for the Tinson Pen Airdrome were not part of TVJ News' ATI request. In a previous ATI request in 2017, it was revealed that it cost $380 million to operate the Ian Fleming International Airport, while the earnings totaled $33.5 million. But with the losses at all these airdromes, will the Vernon Field Airdrome in Clarendon be any different? Or will it become another white elephant, costing Jamaican taxpayers millions of dollars? Herman Green, TVJ News. The leadership of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, JAS, has questions about what was happening under the previous leadership. As part of their effort to get answers, they will order an audit of the Umbrella Groups, the Association of Branch Societies. Some of these ABSs, that one in particular and some others, have never sent in an audited financial statement to the parent body. President of the Jamaica Agriculture Society, Lenworth Fulton, outlining the rot at some of the Association of Branch Societies, or ABS for short. These ABS are located in the 14 parishes across the island and represent the interests of farmers in those parishes. But according to the president, some have been failing in this regard. In fact, some of the practices at some of these groups hint at corruption. The rule is that one of the paid staff should sign on their account, and that is not being maintained in many of them. Which is why he has adopted a tough stance. I told them there that I'm a new sheriff in town, and those things will have to change. Action is planned too. Mr. Fulton is looking to trace what's been happening inside the branches with an audit dating back to at least the last 10 years. This is to ensure the organization is transparent, a must-have if they are to get financial support from private sector and the government. I have taken a, 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 a solemn obligation to run the JS with transparency, with honesty, to run the internal democracy as a robust um, thing and I'm not going to sit and allow the Jamaica Agriculture Society to slip anymore. Mr. Fulton, who is also the president of the St. Catherine ABS, explained that farmers in this parish were not particularly affected by the extended security measures, which, among other things, curtailed the movement of persons. Those that have come to our meetings have not expressed anything negative about the state of emergency. I must admit that we have not done a survey to, to go deeper into that. But I have not picked up anything negative because one must consider that the parish of St. Catherine have a very high crime rate. 
And farmers do not operate businesses like rum bars and restaurants and so on that it would impact on. Um, so I guess it wouldn't impact on them much because they go to their farm during daylight hours and come home in the evening. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News.